Okay. Well, we've got a got a bunch of attendants here, so that's good. All right. Um, my name is Pat McNally. Uh, I'm the Eastern Regional Support Manager for Metalogix. Um, I'm also a longtime Replicator user and uh, expert. I've been using Replicator for about 12 years now. Uh, and we've recently started these quick takes. And I thought probably the best place to start is right at the beginning. Uh, everybody who buys the software has to install and upgrade. Uh, so I, I think it's a good topic to begin with. Uh, you'll notice in the, in the go to, in the webinar that there's an, there's a question section. Feel free to ask your questions, um, throughout. I'll probably, uh, I'll only answer your questions at the, the end of the presentation. Uh, so the format is about, we do 15 minutes, um, of me presenting. And then I open up the floor for 15 minutes, and we go through all your questions. Okay? All right, so let's begin. All right, so what we're going to cover today, uh, we're going to cover some of the reference materials that are available to you, uh, some of the planning that's required for installation, the prereqs, some considerations, licensing. Uh, same thing for upgrading. Uh, what you need to think about when you're upgrading. Uh, we'll talk about patching SharePoint. And then we'll take a look at a couple of issues that are uh, can be common whenever you're um, installing Replicator or upgrading. Okay. So one of, the, one of the guides that you should really read after today's session uh, is the Replicator Advanced Installation Guide. A lot of what I talk about today is actually going to be uh, is covered in this guide. Uh, there's a lot of good information in there. That comes with every downloaded uh, software package. So you actually, whenever you download the Replicator program, it comes with <clears throat> a bunch of documentation already packaged with it. Uh, some of the other ones that uh, you should be interested in are uh, the change log and the Replicator known issues and also the command line reference guide. The change log gives you a, uh, tells you everything that's changed in that version. Uh, the replicator known issues lists out anything that we know of that's a, a, an open problem um, or new features that you should know about that you'll find in uh, replicator known issues. The command line reference guide, um, as administrators or as the people doing the installation or the upgrade, there's a lot of useful um, command line tool, uh, command line uh, commands that you can run, and you'll find all of those in the command line reference guide. Okay, uh, and a, a, you know a tip: whenever you're doing an installation or upgrade, you should be reading that change log and that known issues guide each time because they do change and they do provide you uh, valuable information. Okay. Uh, one other thing you should also be aware of, if you're not already, is there is a knowledge base available for uh, for all clients. Uh, as long as your as long as your support maintenance contract is current, uh, you have access to that uh, knowledge base. Okay, we can actually take a quick look. And let me actually, I'll show you that after. Let's move on. Okay. Oops. So planning for install. For install. So some of the prerequisites, um, and of course all of these prereqs are listed in, in detail in that guide that I talked about, the, install, uh, the advanced install guide. Three of the key ones, though, that you're going to need that are, you know, the most common is you're going to have to have an available uh, administration account for use to install that account. So he has to be a local admin on that server. Uh, you're also going to need to know the password for your account for the account running the central admin app pool. That's who our engine runs as as well. So you're going to need that password uh, when you're doing your install. And of course, you're going to have to know all the machines in your farm that you're going to install Replicator to. We'll talk a little bit more about this. Uh, some of your considerations for the installation uh, testing is one that I that I talk about often. Is have you actually um, taken a few moments to do a sanity test in your sandbox just to make sure you know that the baseline of what you need replicator to do um, is functioning as you uh, as you desire it okay so as a tip you know put together baseline of what the functionality 
you know, what libraries, what pages are mission critical to your organization and test those before you roll out a new version of Replicator. Um, also something, uh, I don't know if it ever, everybody knows, if it's common knowledge that you can set up uh, a test environment using only one machine. You know, Replicator can replicate between two separate web apps on the same farm. So it's pretty simple to set up uh, a test environment even with some minimal hardware if you don't have a lot of resources available to you. Okay. Uh, another thing is, uh, that's not common not knowledge, is virus scanning. So if you have a virus scanner on your uh, machine, uh, on the server that you're installing Replicator to, it can actually be, uh, it can actually lock some files that we're trying to access at the same time. So we ask that you exclude those paths. And the two paths that you want to exclude are the temp folder for that central admin application pool account, and also the replicator data folders for any replicator enabled web applications that are in your farm. And the data folders uh, would really be covered in another topic. It's part of configuration, but it's something that you should know about uh, while you're installing as well. All right. And we'll just continue on here. Um, some other things that you need to know about installation. Uh, it does cause a momentary outage in the way of an IS recess, IS reset. So if that's an issue, you need to schedule for after hours or let, you, let your end users know uh, that there could be a possibility of some downtime. Uh, just some other general tips. Do you have everybody's phone number you're going to need during installation? You know, if you're doing this install at 11 o'clock at night, and something goes wrong, you should have all the connections that you need, uh, and especially our number. Oop, let me go back. If you have, uh, also get your list of all the machines that you're going to be installing to. With the Replicator Enterprise Edition, you can actually run our engine on multiple farms, and I'm going to talk about that, uh, on multiple servers in the farm. I'll talk about that in one second. Um, so, you need to make the decision if you are using multiple engines. In the Enterprise Edition, the engine can actually be run on every server in your farm, one server in your farm, really depending on what the workload is going to be in your environment. So if you have an app server and a couple of web front ends, you can install and run Replicator on all three of those to share the load. Um, what I found though is 98% of the time uh, in it, uh, environments running Replicator, one server running the engine is usually enough. Okay, so the Replicator engine, and I'll show you these where these bits are afterwards. It consists of two services: our MetaLogic Replicator service, that's the service that's responsible for install uh, for processing and uh, scheduling packages. The transport service is what we use to actually communicate to the bit service that actually schedules and run and, and does the package delivery for us. Okay. Uh, one other big thing as well that often gets thought about afterwards is do you have your license key? Make sure that you have it available. So replicate it, and the way that Replicator is licensed is for every server that you have in your farm that's running the web application service, Replicator is going to use one license. So even if you have an index server out there, let's say, and if you have the web application service running on it, Replicator is going to use a license because it's going to get deployed to that server. So you need to be aware in your topology where that service is running and if you have enough licenses. Okay. Uh, and just to note, the support reps, uh, say you called in the middle of the night and you didn't have enough licenses, the support reps don't have the ability to change that license for you. So planning that, you know, up front is very important. Okay. All right. And I just put together just this sample checklist just to give you an idea, you know, whenever you're doing your install. It's something simple uh, but can save you a lot of grief while you're doing it. Like, for example, list out your accounts, what servers you're going to be installing to, where you've stored the installation, you know, where you want to install it, you know, your contacts, maybe the IP address, uh, the replicator license key, you know, all the things that are important that are going to make the install easy for you. Okay. And now let's talk a little bit about upgrading. So whenever we're talking about upgrading, there's 
uh, a couple of a couple of other things that you can think about in, in large organizations, especially the enterprise edition, which is usually um, it's large organizations that buy the enterprise edition, uh, and they can't you can't always upgrade everything all at the same time. Um, so did you know that you can actually replicate between versions of Replicator? So most major point versions of Replicator are compatible with each other and you can actually replicate between them. So you don't have to get your entire topology upgraded in one day. Um, so we, but we do recommend that you do that as quickly as you can. You know, do it over a few days or, or a week, um, but try to get the Try to get the latest version uh, that you're installing uh, the same across the board. Uh, and again, with licensing, again, uh, did your topology change at all? Are you adding a new server to the farm? Do you need more licenses? Make sure that you've got those all ahead of time. Uh, one thing that that is probably not well known is that did you know that when you patch SharePoint, you can actually break your replicator implementation? And the reason being is we are we cer we're certified to run against specific versions of SharePoint. If you install a patch that came out the day before and still have Replicator uh, enabled, we we may not work with that. So basically, what happens is Replicator will turn itself off, so that we uh, so that we don't harm anything. So it's really important. You know, there's a specific set of steps that you should follow when you're patching SharePoint on, the, on your farms. Um, and that's, you know, starting on page 31 of that advanced installation guide uh, shows that it talks about that procedure. So that's an important one to remember. Okay. Okay. And now I'm just going to I'm going to talk a little bit about troubleshooting. Then I'm going to go on to one of my VMs, and I'm going to show you um, these components. Uh, so part of troubleshooting is you know knowing where everything is. So I think an important thing to cover here is you know what are all the components? What are all those components? We have the installation files, the engine, um, the replication files that we have in the hive replication files in the global assembly uh, cache, our solutions, and our features. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about some of the common install issues, you know, the solutions not getting deployed properly, and virtual directories not getting created, services not starting, or application pools not starting, uh, an incorrect version of DLLs deployed on one of the servers in the farm. Um, okay, so I'm going to switch over to my VM here. And this slideshow real quick. Give me one moment. All right. And we're going to start on the file system. All right. So the first thing after the install, uh, Replicator installs uh, by default into your C drive. You know, C program files, Metalogix, Replicator. WSS4, depending on the version of WSS you're on, this directory could change. Um, and these are all the install files. You know, this is where the meat of the product gets installed. Okay. Uh, there's documentation available here. The advanced install guide is actually installed with the product, so it's always available to you. It's in MHT format, so you can even read it while you're on the server. Okay, it'll come up as an HTML. Command line reference guide is there as well. And your change log is also there. Okay, let's go back here. And now let's take a look at some of the files that are in this directory. So the solution files do actually get put in this directory. I mean, they get added into SharePoint, and I'll show you where they are in SharePoint as well. Um, but this is where they start off. Uh, the our config files are all in this directory as well. Okay, now. Go. Now the engine itself, the engine itself is also housed in this directory. There's two services. There's a service exe and the transport service exe. But those are actually uh, services uh, in your in your Windows uh, control panel. So these are what make up the engine. This is what we call the engine. Whenever you want to run multiple engines on your farm, you would run the install on each server in your farm that you want to run this engine on. 
Okay, and what the engine allows you to do, it allows you to uh, basically share the load on your farm. If you have a, a, a huge amount of transactions and you notice uh, when the product is in use that it can't keep up, then you can have the option of adding another engine to the farm to help share that load. Okay. Uh, so some of the files that are in the hive. Let's go common files, Microsoft shared, web server extensions, 14, and then template, layouts, 1033, no, no, not here. And it's called Synergy. Uh, the folder's called Synergy. Uh, and that was from, that's who built the project originally, and uh, we were purchased by Metlogix. Okay. So right now, I've actually retracted the solutions so that I can show um, what it looks like when uh, solutions aren't deployed properly, uh, which we'll see in a second. But here you would see a bunch of ASPX files. Those are basically our, our interface whenever you're uh, in SharePoint. And you'll also find uh, under layouts, and you'll also find some of those under uh, admin as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, some other places that we deploy files are your INET pub directory. So whenever Replicator deploys, we will put files into... Uh, Oh, and of course, I've retracted the solutions, but we will put files into the bin directory uh, under the virtual directories as well. We'll have some DLLs in there, and we can come back and visit that in a moment. Okay. All right, and one more thing. So one more thing on the file system, and that is in the assembly cache. We do have a DLL in here. Melogix, oh, wow, one second, no, sorry, of course, actually not deployed as well, solution's not deployed, so it's not in the cache, uh, but there will be one DLL in here as well called Synergy Replicator, uh, and that's the only DLL that the, the replicator puts in the cache, okay, all right, now, let's go into SharePoint itself, so we actually... We actually deploy um, several solutions into the farm solutions. So we have the Metalogix Replicator CA solution. We have the Metalogix Replicator solution and the solution UI. This top solution is what you see in uh, the central admin interface. The Replicator solution is, is the meat of the product. Um, and the UI is basically just the UI at the site level. Uh, so right now I don't have them... I've retracted them from here just so that I could show you later um, what you can expect if solutions don't deploy correctly. All right. Um, okay, now we also, and I'll have to wait to show you uh, until I deploy the solutions, there's actually some features that get installed at the site level. And that's just a, that's just a UI so that uh, site administrators can actually do some of the replicator uh, actions. Okay, so for now we'll move on to talking about common install issues. Um, the most common ones, I guess, in, in large orga organizations are um, actually um, solution deployment issues. You know, we have a couple of virtual directories that we need in IIS. Those sometimes have an issue getting created. Um, sometimes people get caught off guard by they we do an IIS reset and for whatever reason some of their... Um, some of the website app pools don't restart. Okay, so let's start off with the assumption that okay, I've done my install. Everything I think went through. There's no, I didn't get any errors in the install. You know, everything passed. But then I go and I, maybe I try to access some of my screens. And okay, it, you know, for whatever reason, I'm getting correlation errors right off the bat, and that's. 99% of the time, it's because the solutions haven't gotten deployed properly. So there is a couple of simple things that you can do. 
you can you can manually deploy them through system settings you know manage farm solutions you can deploy them that way or there's there's actually a command uh, that we offer uh, via command line that you can do that as well and it's pretty simple it's just the rep ADM command it's actually called rep ADM dash O redeploy solutions and that's covered in the um, in the command line reference guide I was talking about earlier. Okay, it's just a matter of running that, and it's actually going to go ahead and deploy those solutions for us. Okay, I'm going to go into the farm solutions, and it started that deployment for us. Okay, now while I'm waiting for that, that's going to take a minute. I'll answer. Uh, I've got a question here from. Pull this out of here, make it a little bigger. Okay, I've got a question from Rakesh. Uh, so we have a farm with 16 servers, 10 WFEs, and 6 app servers. We have a replicator license uh, for 6 of the servers when I'm trying to use replicator in one server. So why does it consider all those extra WFE servers? And that's a good question, and it's something that we uh, we get normally. And it's just really has to do with our licensing scheme. Uh, so instead of doing a, a a licensing scheme based on the number of users, we do it based on uh, the front end. So, um, and that's really all that it is. That was all the de that was the decision that was made. Um, so anywhere where you have that web application, there's a potential that the user could hit that server because it is, you know, it, even if it isn't available through, um, you know, DNS or they can't actually directly hit it, it could be brought live, right? And they could actually hit that server. So that's why they went with that licensing model. That's the reason behind it. Okay. Let's see if this is done yet. So it's waiting. Deploy, deploy, deploy. We're almost done. Just waiting for the UI solution to deploy. And it can be a little slow. And you know, depending on the amount of servers in your uh, in your farm, uh, this can take some time. Okay. And we've also got so one other thing that we'll look at while that's deploying um, is I'm going to take a look in IAS here real quick. Um, let me start that up. The other thing on multiple servers, whenever you have multiple servers in a farm that replicators are replicating to and UAC is involved, um, we can usually successfully create these virtual directories I'm about to show you on uh, the farm where you actually do the installation. Um, on the other servers in the farm that might get hit, oh, they're not here, hang on a sec. On the other servers in the farm, they may not be able to get created um, because we don't have uh, the we don't have the permissions to do that remotely, uh, so it is a step that you may have to do uh, manually. Okay, and here they are. I mean, this is just the path. So for each each web application that you, and this is more to do with upgrade because these won't be here on initial initial um, installation. On upgrade, they'll have already been here because you'll have web apps uh, enabled, and we'll talk about that in another session. And this is the path. So underscore layouts, you know, synergy, replicator. And you should have that, and then export and import. And you should have those for every web um, application that you have uh, deployed. If they're not here, it's a matter of uh, creating them manually. And we're running low on time, so I'm not going to be able to show them creating those manually. But it's a, it's a fairly simple process and also covered um, in a KB, one of the KB articles on the KB site, uh, and I believe talked about in the installation guide. Okay. 
It should be done now. I'm going to refresh this while I'm at it. Okay. And now let's also talk about the services as well. Um, it's very, very rare for the services not to start uh, whenever the install is done. The only two reasons behind service, the services not being able to be started are there's something wrong with our config file, which is in our install directory. It's malformed, which is out of the box impossible, but if you've made some, any changes to it, um, it may be possible uh, that it's malformed and it, because it is an XML file, and our uh, services will detect that and they won't start. Uh, the other reason is that it can't talk to SQL. So if SQL's down, our services won't run. Um, it, they'll just turn themselves off. Okay. Now the other thing we should talk about is uh, one other thing that is also very uncommon is that you find some DLL files that are uh, a different version uh, in IIS. So let me go back to IIS here real quick. And I'm running low on time. And guys, feel free to go ahead and ask your questions now while I'm going through this as well. And let's go take a look at <clears throat> this directory. Or sorry. The INET pub directory. Root 80. We'll have a bin directory now. This is where we deploy our uh, DLLs to. So it is possible, and, and you'll it it will come. It'll it'll become apparent whenever you're going through the UI and things aren't behaving in the UI. You know, you'll get some collation error or uh, correlation ID errors and um, that's usually an indication that either the you know something in the solution deployment didn't go right, or you might have an old version of a of a DLL out there that's you know we're trying to call something that doesn't exist anymore. So it may come down to actually having to go through and and take a look at your uh, what's available in in those bin directories to make sure it's the correct version. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's really all that I had to do. I know it's a bit of a basic look at you know the install and configuration, uh, but I think uh, hopefully I gave you some uh, some things to think about. And of course, if you have any uh, follow-up questions, you know p please feel free to uh, send those questions in to support, and uh, we'll get them answered for you. Uh, I think that's the. I don't see any other questions other than from Rakesh. Here we go. Hi, Naga. Uh, so we can talk about, if you need to talk about workflows, then that's probably a, that's definitely going to be another session. Uh, for So for all of these quick takes, we're really going to, we're going to cover uh, a lot of the different topics because I'm sure as you're, uh, as you know, Replicator is quite a, a, a robust and large product and there's, there's lots of things to ask about. Uh, but I'll talk about workflows real quickly, uh, just in, you know, uh, high level. Uh, workflows can be, workflows can be replicated. Um, out of the box workflows should work 100%. Uh, Visual Studio workflows as well. So the one, uh, Visual Studio and uh, SharePoint Designer, those three. Uh, if there's any, if you're using any third party workflows, they may or may not work. It really will take some testing, and uh, we we have worked with clients in the past to help them uh, get over uh, issues with uh, third-party uh, workflow uh, applications. So definitely, Naga, if you have uh, other questions about that, please feel free to follow up with support, and we will definitely uh, help you answer those questions. Okay, um, if there's no more questions. Uh, then I think we'll end the meeting now. It's 2.30. Uh, I hope this was uh, a useful session for you, and I appreciate your attendance. Uh, please attend our next sessions, and uh, that's it for now. All right. Thank you, everybody.